I'm so excited because I'm going to paint my favorite thing and that is cats. <laughs> so I have three cats. I have Ralphie and Samwise and Coraline and they're all siblings and they are all the joys of my days and they are so naughty every single day <laughs> and I love them to pieces and I love drawing them and I love painting them. And I thought we could do a project where I show you a really simple way to make a cat shape and put a background on it and you can get all sorts of really fun, um, fun cats that you can make cards or um, edigami, dandelion lessons to send to people or even to keep for yourself. So um, I have, hold on, that was my cat Coraline who just knocked everything over. Oh well. Anyways, she might be back. Um, <laughs> so I have a stack of water, uh, Strathmore watercolor postcards um, that I'll be using first. And then I also have some of my Edigami postcards from Jet Pens. And I'm running low on them, but luckily my wonderful mama sent me a gift card to Jet Pens for my birthday. And so I'm going to order some more. I'm very excited about that because I love these. They're more expensive than the Strathmore watercolor postcards, but they have a very different feel to them, and you'll see a little bit later. So I'm gonna um, just remove one of these, and we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna show you my supplies. I have my watercolor postcard, I have a glass of water, I have my Artist for Everyone palette, and of course, as always, in the description box below the video, I list substitutions for all of these colors. Um, in case you don't have them and you want to use any watercolor set, you can do that. Um, but I really love these, and this, they'll be super fun for this project. And I have a little flower watercolor dish um, to mix some colors if I need to. As you can see, I was already using it. <laughs> And I have my Sennelier Triple Zero Mop, but any pointed round watercolor brush would be fine. I have a pencil. I have a brush in case I need to dust off my paper. And I have just some extra little things if I need them. I don't know that I will. Um, but I've got a brush pen, a watercolor pencil, a permanent um, Sakura Micron Pigma pen in 003. And I have a graphite aquarelle pencil, which is a water-soluble graphite. I don't know that I'll use them, but I just have them nearby. Oh, I also have a white gel pen. And <clears throat> I'm going to start by misting my paints, just so I kind of wake them up. I haven't used them since yesterday. And I'm going to start, as always, by drawing the shapes. And we're going to keep this really simple. And what I hope is that by just seeing the simple shapes that you need, you can um, use them in all different ways and come up with a different cat every time. And each one will have their own personality, which is super, super fun. So I'm going to start. Um, this is just an HB pencil. And I'm going to turn my paper a little bit. And I'm going to have my cat about right here. And I'm just going to draw an oval for the head. And then I'm going to draw an egg shape, kind of another oval, off to the side. And then I'm going to draw, start about here, I'm going to draw a tail. And then here, I'm going to come and I'm going to draw four legs just by, maybe I'll make this one come down a little lower. So you see how I just kind of made these shapes for legs. And I'm going to take my pencil 
eraser and I'm going to erase the lines of that first oval that I don't need. So again, you can use um, a different sort of arrangement every time. And then on top of my cat, I'm going to draw um, ears that stick out. And that's it. So really, really, really simple. And every time it should be a little bit different. All right, so I've got my basic cat shape and I'm not going to worry about the face, okay, because we'll be putting, using some markers and stuff to draw the face later. But I'm gonna start by putting a background on my cat. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna erase between his ears And the oval. I say he like I know it's going to be a boy. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is decide on the color for the background. I'm going to paint the background first and I'm going to do that by starting with a water glaze. Just put water sort of around the cat shape very simply. Not all over the card, but just I'm going to go around the, the shape that I drew with my watercolor brush and just clean water. And I'm, I'm being careful, but I'm not being crazy about it. We can also fill in later if we need to. But what this does is it stops the, the paint from flowing in to the shape that I drew. So the paint will only go where there's water to take it. And this just helps me make my background painting easier. Then I can be free with it and just sort of drop it in all over and not have to worry about being so careful around those edges. My brush is pretty wet and it's just clean water. And I'm going to choose the color for my background, and I think I'm going to use the wood violet. And I'm just going to start at the top, and I'm going to just start putting the wood violet down. See how the paint starts to flow? And I'm not going to be terribly um, careful, and I'm not going all the way to the edge of the paper. I don't need to, because this is just fun. If you want to go to the edge, that's fine. But look at that wood violet, how it just flows. And I'm sorry about my hand. I've, I have an overuse injury, a little tendonitis. With my book work, I've been doing a lot of Photoshop just resizing images and stuff and I've been using my trackpad my mouse way too much So in here, it's a little bit lighter. So I'm just adding a little bit more of the wood violet in here And then I'll take my brush anywhere that I feel like I need to and I'm just sort of Filling in in this in the little spaces that maybe it didn't reach okay I love it and I'm just because this is fun actually I'm just gonna take my spray bottle or you could just sprinkle it with your brush and I'm just gonna give it a little spritz and that's all I can do for now because I have to wait for this background to dry. And then once it's dry, I can paint the cat. So I'm going to go make a cup of tea, read a little bit from my book. And when this is dry, I will be back to continue. So why don't you go ahead and get to this point and then we'll begin again. Okay, so my background is dry. 
And now we're going to put a layer of paint on the cat. And I think before I start, I'm gonna use my eraser and anywhere I see a pencil line, I'm just going to go over it lightly. Let's get rid of a few, a few of the pencil lines. You don't have to do that, but if I can, I do. So now I'm going to decide on the color for the background, and I think I'm going to use the Buff Titan and the Ochre Leger. But I'm going to start with a water glaze, and I'm going to put water, I'm going to start with the tail. And I'm just sweeping a water glaze down the tail to where it meets the body. And I'm not worried about going all the way to the edges because I can pull the paint to the edge. But I'm going to start with a buff Titan and just drop it in to the water glaze. And then take my brush and just go around the edges, right up to the wood violet. Coraline! She's being so naughty. She is sitting on my desk and using her paw to just swat things off one at a time. Coraline! No! <laughs> See, I'm just kind of working my brush through and bringing, bringing the paint to the edge how I can. And then I'm going to take some of the ochre leger. And I'm just going to drop it in. I'm going to put some on the tip, and I'm just going to make little dots of it down the tail. So it's got kind of a striped tail. Okay. And now I'm going to paint the head. So again, I'm going to start with a water glaze. And I'm just, I'm going down into the body a little bit just to give the illusion of a chin. And again, I'm not going all the way to the edge, almost. I'm just putting it down the water and I'm just going to sweep my brush over it. And pick up some of the buff titan and drop it in all over, rinse my brush, clean it off, kind of roll it to a point so it's dry, and then I'll use my brush to kind of go around the edges of the face and pull the buff titan out to that wood violet background. I'm just see I'm just sweeping my brush through. Just kind of moving the paint around so it fills it in nicely. And then I think I'm gonna take a little bit of the ochre leger and just put a little bit between the ears at the top, kind of down to the center. See that? Just dropping it in. And then I think I'm going to take the water rose, which is a kind of a peachy rosy red, and just drop it in to the center of the ears. Just let it, let it flow where it wants to flow. A little bit more of that ochre leger, yellow ochre between the ears just down a little bit. So that's it. And then I'm going to work on the body. So when I do the body, I'm going to, same thing, just put a big bunch of water in the center, and then I'm going to go up toward the face, but not all the way to it, 
and then bring it as close to the edges as I can. I don't need to go all the way. Working down those paws, the legs. So if I touched it to the to the part that I've already painted on the head and the tail, the colors would run together. So I'm kind of leaving that separately. And then I'll grab more of the Buff Teton, a nice wet brush, and drop it in all over the body, down the legs. Just let the paint flow. And then dry my brush off and then use my brush to bring the paint up to the face but not quite touching it and then work all the way around the body bringing the paint to that right out to that wood violet Do each leg separately. I'm just using my brush to sort of pull the paint to where it needs to go if it hasn't flowed. Just being careful where I meet the tail. Okay. Then I'll pick up some of my ochre leger again. And I'm going to put some stripes on those front paws they go up into the body a little bit and then maybe I'll do the bottom of the back legs which would be the ones on either side with that color and then maybe drop it in for some stripes along the side of the body just letting it fall off my brush just touching the brush to the wet paint so you see I already have Sort of the illusion of a cat shape now, kind of a tabby cat. It looks like my cat Sam with some ochre leger stripes. I think I'll add a tiny bit more of the wood rose to the inside of the ear. And just a little bit more of that ochre leger between the ears and just pull it down a little bit. A little bit more here where the tail meets the body. All right, now I'm going to let this dry and then we'll be back to finish him up. All right. Okay, so let me turn my light on actually. Let's see if that's good. Okay, so. My cat is now dry. You can see where I accidentally touched a little bit of the wet on the body to the face and they ran together and that's fine. It happens and it just gives it more charm. So we're gonna finish up and the first thing I wanna do is just get some of that ochre leger. And on the tip of my brush, I'm gonna have a somewhat of a dry brush and then dip it back into the paint so I have a really nice point. And where I put the stripes, I'm just going to flick in a few more little marks, just with the tip of my brush, just to sort of emphasize where I added those stripes and give it a little bit of a furry look. Just little tiny tick marks. See that? Really small. Grab a little more. Anywhere that I've put a stripe, I'm just adding 
tiny little tick marks. Here comes Coraline. She's so naughty today. <laughs> she just wants my attention. There. And then I'm going to take more of that ochre leger, the tip of my brush, and I'm going to add a little bit on the inside of the ear and well actually the outsides of the ear just to sort of define them and then put little tiny tick marks <clears throat> kind of coming down in the center of his head and then I'll take a tiny bit of the wood rose so the blotter rose on my brush, really pale, and just add a little more inside the ears. There. And that's all I really want to do with paint. So now I'm going to think about his nose and his eyes and all of that. <clears throat> and I think um, if you don't have, a, I have a watercolor pencil and kind of this, it's called Venetian Red, which is very similar to Wood Rose. So if you don't have that, you could use Venetian Red paint or your Wood Rose paint, your Blotta Rose, and you could, you could draw that in. So I'm just going to come down here and just draw a little heart shape for the nose. Okay, you could also do that with the tip of your brush and a little blotter rose paint. And then I think I'm going to use my pencil first. Um, and you can go right into pen or you can use the pencil first, but I think I'm going to use my pencil first and I'm going to draw my eye shape. So I'm going to come up, this is his nose, and I'm going to come up the side of his nose and just make a cat eye shape. Okay, um, that's very faint, but I just want, I feel better putting something in with pencil first. And then I'll come from the bottom of his nose and make a little cat mouth shape. And then I'm going to use my pen. So you, you could also stick with pencil. I mean, that's fine too, um, which is a nice soft look. But I think I'm going to use my pen, this little black micron pen, and just put stippling marks in for the eye shape and on the side of his nose. Just little dots. Okay? And then put little dots down for his little mouth shape. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see it better. Hopefully. Alright? And then I'm going to come down with I don't know, I guess it's a diamond shape for the pupil of his eye. And just fill it in, but I'm leaving just a little tiny touch of white. Not much. And then I can use stippling marks to sort of complete his eyes. Very, very simple. Okay, now for the whiskers, I'm thinking he probably has lighter whiskers. So I'm going to use just my pencil, and I'm just going to use these, um, starting where his whiskers would be on the side of his nose, between his nose and his mouth, and just sort of flick out a few whisker shapes. That's it. For the background, I think I'm going to use a white gel pen, and where some of these little splotches have gone in the paint, I'm just going to draw little sparkles. So 
So little, just like little stars in the sky. Or snowflakes. However you want to think of it. And you don't have to do this. Depending on the, how your background turned out, you don't have to. But I just put a few of those in. And I think that's good. I really like him. And I could even, I could even use my white gel pen just to put a little bit of white back in where his head ran into his body. So you guys, this is a really simple, fun thing. It's just adorable, okay? So it, it, they're all gonna turn out differently, and I hope that you'll make many, many different kinds. So that is one way to do this. Now I'm gonna show you another way with an origami postcard, because this paper tends to bleed when you put paint on it or ink. And we're gonna start the same way and I'm gonna draw an oval. And then I think I'll make this cat skinnier. And I think I'll make his tail come this way. And then make his legs Like that. Then I'll erase. And I don't know how this this paper doesn't take eraser quite as well. And then I think I'll make his ears kind of pointy, like that. <laughs> And brush off my eraser dust. I can see that it kind of lifted the paper a little bit, so if you're using an origami postcard, remember that. And <clears throat> where's my brush? I'm gonna start this time with just the cat, okay? And I'm gonna put down a water glaze. And you'll notice that the water is sort of seeping out around the edges of the cat. It's going to have a very different feel than the Strathmore watercolor postcard. The water will spread. So keep it kind of inside the pencil lines. I'll leave the tail for next. And then I'm going to choose my color. And I think, I think I'm going to make a blue cat. So I'm going to use my blue Premier and start dropping in the paint, but with the tip of my brush. Very different. You see how it's going to go to the edges and spread out where the water is. And your brush marks, your brush marks will actually stay where you put them. So you kind of get this modeled, almost, it's almost like batik. All right. And then I'm going to do the same with this tail. And I think for his tail, I'm going to stick with the blue. I like it. All right, so now I have this little blue cat with sort of a halo of blue around him, which I love. <laughs> I just love it. And I think instead of painting a background all around, I'm going to put one color here from from like halfway down so I'm just gonna use Buada Rose 
and make a nice puddle of it in my palette. And I like it because it's sort of a warm, peachy, corally red. Plenty of water. And I'm going to make it about right here, and I'm just going to draw a line. And I'm going to go around the outside of that halo. Just keep filling my brush up. And they're going to sort of bleed together, but that's okay. I'm taking it all the way to the edge. See how this paper just absorbs the paint and then it starts to feather. And just keep adding the paint and pulling it down. I needed to make more in the beginning and I didn't make enough. this way. And then just sort of go around that blue halo. And they will blend together a little bit and you want that. Because it just makes a super cool effect. And I should say that this Edigami postcard is the one that comes in the purple package. I don't, I, I don't know what the names are. Um, and then I'll turn it around and I'm going to choose another color for the top. And I think, hmm. big decision. I think I'm going to use the raw umber, believe it or not. So I'll make a nice puddle of raw umber. Not too dark, so I'll, I'll add plenty of water to it. And I'm going to do the same. So. Just kind of go around the halo. And drop, just sort of paint the raw umber on the upper background. And I'm going just right up to that blue halo. And they'll sort of mix together. So fun. Lots of lots of water. And you can, as you can see, the brush strokes sort of remain, so you kind of want to keep things going in the same direction. But if you don't, that's okay too. It just has a great effect no matter what. All right, now, 
So my background is done and my cat is done. And I think on him, I'm going to use my white gel pen and just put a few stripes. Oh, it's too wet. I'll let him dry and then I'll come back and show you how to finish this up. Okay, so while this was drying, Coraline decided to jump up and lie on it. And so you can see where it smudged a little. <laughs> so that's Coraline for you. But um, let's finish this cat. And the first thing I want to do is I want to put a little rug. And I'm going to use my white gel pen and just draw a little rug at the edge here. And you can do anything. I mean, just use your imagination and everyone should be fun and different. Let's see. Just put some flowers. White gel pens are super. Some are better than others. This is a nice one. It's by Sakura. It's called Decorez. Um, This paint could probably stand to dry a little bit longer. But you can see that I can add pen on top. Gold gel pens are fun, silver. I could use gray. Just put a little bit of patterning down below. And then for the face, I'm going to go right into my pen. And I'm going to draw little eyes. Give her a little black nose. And if you don't want a dark line, you can always just stipple. So stippling is just making little dots. And I'm going to use black for the whiskers and just make long whiskers. And I might even put little dots on the bottom of her paws. And what else could I add? Maybe um, use the white gel pen and just put a little bit of white inside the ears. The whiskers aren't really standing out, so maybe I'll I'll use a little white gel pen too. Just to give her a little bit of white on the side of her face there. So that's another way that you can do it with the with the rice paper that tends to bleed a little bit more. Okay, so let me hold this up for you. And I'll take pictures of them too. Sweet. I love the little halo that it makes on this paper. So that's another one. And then I started even another one to show you even a different way to approach it. And this time I drew a, a, a small circle for the head and a larger oval for the body. And then I just kind of wrapped a tail around and drew some ears and a little paw sticking out here and here. So again, it's very, very simple, the drawing. And then I put my water glaze down around the cat and dropped in a mix of the Blue Premier and a little bit of Viridian and a tiny touch of Sambrulé to gray it out. 
and I put the blue background on and then I painted around the bottom of the cat and dropped in wood rose or water rose okay so you can see blue on top and then this pinky color on the bottom and then when that dried I put a very pale wash of buff Teton on the cat all over the cat and you can see where I drew in the little suggestion of of the eyes and nose there and we're going to keep it really simple for this one and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wake up that wood rose and I'm just going to paint a little bit of pink inside the ear and then over on this side maybe toward the edge and a little tiny bit of pink at the bottom of the nose and then I'm gonna just drop in on the outside of the ear where the body meets the head a little bit of a water glaze and then bring it down here where the tail meets the body and I'm gonna take a tiny bit of the cobalt and a tiny bit of the sand brulee to make a gray. So any blue and any orange or burnt sienna makes a gray. And just drop in a little bit of gray there and then here where her arm is under her face, I'll paint gray. And then a little bit at the edge of her paw on either side. And then I'm going to paint just a little bit of it down the sides of her nose and where her eyes are. And then rinse my brush and dry it off. And, and up here, I'm just going to soften that edge. I'm just pulling my clean dry brush through just to sort of soften it anywhere I put the gray and just lifting up what's extra. I'm just kind of putting in just a tiny tiny bit of gray. And then under her body, and maybe I'll even put a tiny bit of gray here where her ear meets her head. And then also soften that a little bit. So softening just means putting a clean dry brush and sort of wicking up anything extra. So it's just like this soft, soft bit of color. Also here where I made the suggestion of her sides of the nose and everything. And then under her body, I'm gonna do the same, but I'm just gonna take the gray on my brush and all along the underside of her, I'm just putting a little bit of gray. It's very, very pale. Make sure where her tail meets her body, you have a little bit of gray there too. And when you look at it, I mean, you might see where you need a little bit more. There. And I could go on this um, and do the same and put um, just some white polka dots on either the blue or pink background just to give it a little little bit of decoration. Just a tiny bit. And then that's another, another way you can do it. So you can take these simple shapes. Cats are really just circles and rectangles and long tails and little bits sticking out. You don't have to be exact. You can draw, you can look at pictures of cats or look at your own cats and just try to uh, sit with your sketchbook and draw some simple shapes of how they appear to you. Cats sleep in so many funny ways. And so we can do that um, 
you know, sit and observe them. And then create these very simple, really whimsical and endearing little paintings. Um, so these are, these are the ones I did today. So sweet. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to take a picture of these and then finish the video up and upload it for you. And I hope you will try this. I hope you'll try many different colors and many different shapes of cats. Every time you draw a face, it will have a different expression. This is a very childlike sense of play for, um, for this project. I want you to feel childlike and, and experimental and dreamy and just have fun with it. And that's the whole point of a project like this. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time um, for the next Artists for Everyone video. It probably won't be until next week, but hopefully this will give you something to practice until then. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Take care.